six years ago, I was in jail. And uh, I got out in August of 2004. Yeah. And it's been all downhill from there. I was living in a residential care facility. They went as far as to make your bed, clean your room, which I fought for a long time over. They didn't even want me cleaning my room. I went from living with my daughter and my, by myself to that, to doing nothing. And why? I really wasn't capable of uh, living like an adult. I, uh, I was using drugs every day. I, I was living in a room with the Y and not really happy. I used to have my own business, cleaning and gardening. And since I became disabled, I became poor and I was unable to keep to keep my cars on the road. For about two years, I was riding my bike year-round in the rain, in the winter, in the snow, and it was cold, and the wind, the, the wind is so cold in the winter that even the little zipper space, if you have a nice down coat on, even the little space in the zipper is enough to, to, for the wind to go right through you, and it's freezing. Our clients didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, please, can I have schizophrenia? I would love to live an impoverished lifestyle. I mean, that's not how it works. The reality is, is that one in six people have a mental illness, and even more than that, have contact with somebody in their family having a mental illness. People are the people that we sort of walk past on the street. We know that they're a little bit different, a little bit strange. Maybe we don't want to deal with it that day, so we walk past them. Either one that people don't understand what it is or that they have some fear about it. So the truth of the matter is is that people with major mental illnesses are not any more, statistically not any more likely to commit a crime than the general population. One of the wonderful things about working at Gilead in particular is that we're a private nonprofit, we're relatively small, and we sort of, we very much so create our own agenda, our own philosophical approach to working with people. The premise of our mission is to um, help support individuals in their home, in group homes, supported apartments, but provide them the support that they need and help them with the independent living skills to to integrate into the community. We provide a supportive environment, a therapeutic environment, where all the staff are constantly looking for and providing the kind of support that they need to be moving on to more independence. We have um, case management that goes into people's apartments and helps them there. Anything else for you today, That's it. All right. Um, it's really a continuum of whatever anybody needs, whether it's the stigma of it, or, you know, or whatever goes on. For our clients, not only having to deal with the illness, but then having to deal with the um, the ostracism or the stigma that comes around, you know, it's it's really um, it's amazing that they have the stamina to deal with that um, because it's really hard. Our clients who have. Uh, schizophrenia or a major depression, um, you know, have to wake up in the morning and, and, or a, ma a major anxiety and, and go through the entire day dealing with that. And then also to run into somebody, um, you know, downtown on the street or in a restaurant or, uh, you know, when they're shopping or something like that, who, um, you know, will uh, take their kids and walk the other way. And our, our clients see that and they know that and they understand that in the grocery store and somebody is is talking to the cantaloupes while you know they're trying to figure out which one to take and you see them and you think oh well they're either talking to themselves or they're talking to somebody else what's going on um, you know it's a little bit odd those are all sort of the invisible people in society whose voices don't tend to get heard
have to stand up for our rights just like all those other minorities do. We're a minority just like a, just like everyone else. There's a person. We're a, we're a person. We're, you know, we we have to fight for our rights so we don't get discriminated against, so people don't have the wrong impression about us. We call it stigma busting. We have, you know, we have to always um, prove to people that we're people too. The beautiful thing about Gilead is that everybody advocates, um, you know, on their behalf. So, you know, you want to kind of weave into what you say is that, you know, I, we don't know who the new governor is yet, so we brought two letters of introduction. Why we're going to the Capitol, right? We want to get a jump on the competition. That's right. We want to let the folks know at the Capitol that yep. we're here. We are determined to be heard. Yep. And we don't. We're not going away. We're not going anywhere. Uh, did they figure out who won the governor? here in this building at all? Is yes, right? yes. Read one of them. I would think the best thing that you could do mm -hmm. is to find out where your campaign office was oh. and get it to them that way. Maybe okay. on the web or something that had information where you'd be able to find the address. That's a good idea. All right, cool. Okay. All, right, all right, thanks. We tried to get to the governor's office, but no go. We didn't know who the governor was, so we've been going up and asking people, like, do you know who the governor is? Because we have two letters here, and we want to deliver them. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to the uh, the mail room and deliver them there. It's been. Hi. Um. Would you make sure, whichever one is governor, that they would get these? Um. I'll see what I could do. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. She's a promise for us, too. Hmm? She's a promise for us. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. Right. You're just welcome. Yep. Thank you. 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 Gilead, Gilead is, is the expert. Even in my own family, my family, uh, my family is, is very liberal-minded, and yet, they don't understand mental illness the way that I do, the way that people here do. Say, for example, if I got in an argument with my mother, that would be an ordinary argument. For if it was my brother, it would be an ordinary argument. You know, she would, oh, Frank's, Frank's in a bad mood, you know. But if it was me, it would be, have you been taking your medication? Are you sure? And then she might even go behind my back and call my doctor and say, well, Jill's not the same same that she usually is. I wonder if she's not been taking her medication. Gillian, it's it's people like you. It's it's focused on you. It's focused on the person and what they are and what they need and that and that the person is a is a citizen, is an individual. Every time that uh, I think of things, she says, "Oh, what a great idea!" and and she she always uh, thinks. The best of us. You should have seen last night when Victor Church, this gal, she did the green banners. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah, all during the whole thing, all, all, the, all the things, it was fantastic. Wait, hello there. Clubhouses tend to be. Um, an environment with, where folks with schizophrenia feel comfortable and um, can be themselves, where um, some eccentricities of behavior are, um, you know, just tolerated or, or even uh, embraced. That's the Hermanator.
I am the stat man. He is the hermanator. State to state, country to county, county to country, all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric B. Arriving from London via Mitchell South Connecticut. Everything that is done here to make this building function is done by the Gilead clients. So we have our own community here and uh, we take care of ourselves here. I would say that the social center is kind of the, um, the center of Gilead and that um, you know, everybody wants a place where they can go uh, to feel accepted and to um, at times hang out or go into the community, do outside trips, stuff like that. I'm at the social club. And I'm really enjoying myself. Thank all you. Of us, I mean, all of us want to be accepted. All of us want to fit They're in. They're looking for something to do, something to be a part of, a way to back to not only themselves, but their, their smaller community here of other folks that are in recovery and the community at large. We work with people on trying to help them understand while validating the fact that they have the right to be whoever they are and whoever they want to be and we appreciate them and, and love them for who they are. We teach people how to blend. Um, how do you go out there and make yourself, you know, walk down Main Street with people not staring at you? They know about mental illness. They know what the people need and, and you know, what they can and cannot do. They assess each person individually. Everyone needs support and there's nothing, it doesn't mean you're not independent. There's nothing wrong with support. It, it enables you to be independent. Without Gilead, I might not be independent. I might not be able to do all the things I do because um, for that little bit of problems that I have, I wouldn't have that little bit of support that I need. But we won our rights to freedom. And um, we made me cry a little. We won our we won our rights to freedom and uh and that's that's a really important thing, you know, to have to have the uh freedom, you know, uh freedom to, to do to be our to be our own selves, you know, to be people that we are, to um to be part of the community, you know, to vote for who we want to vote for you know, to have equal rights, equal pay. The person uh, has their autonomy taken away. It makes them worse, not better. That's important because a lot of people become complacent when they have things done for them. Gilead is a, is a place where it helped me out a lot uh, going somewhere during the day because you see there's nothing going on during the day. It helps to give you something to do rather than nothing. It was a six year journey. It wasn't easy. I was in one place and in another, residential care facilities, and uh, I finally decided I wanted my own apartment. So I finally got my own apartment, and I'm, I got a lot more freedom, a lot, a lot more responsibilities. Finally made it up the hill, and uh, things are looking good now. I'm looking forward to going back to work and getting a better apartment up a better in my life. And Gilead will be part of my life for the rest of my life. It took a long time before I could get uh, stabilized on medication and you know get a job. And Gilead was right there with me through the whole process. So they might have saved my life. Um, so it's just, it's, I don't know where I'd be without Gilead because without Gilead, I would uh, probably be put in the hospital a lot more road to recovery is so different for everybody. It's going to be twisting and wind, you know, winding in different kinds of ways, but the roads all are going to that same place of recovery, and that's to me what, you know, integration is really about. Thank <laughs> you.